Welcome to the 1130 Wednesday Lunch and Bible Study from Doctor Studies Bible Church in Birmingham, Alabama. We welcome you to us. Uh, we're, uh, if you're a local person, we're, we're not able to have a luncheon. We'll bring it by video, but we will soon, I hope, be able to return to our Wednesday luncheons here at the church on Wednesday. Uh, that, that's a goal of ours. That's why we've kept this whole idea of 1130 Wednesday Bible, Luncheon Bible Study. Today I begin a new series of lessons uh, called the, foundational, the Foundation Doctrines of the Holy Spirit taught by Jesus at the Last Supper. Um, what he taught at the Last Supper on the Holy Spirit what we call the Last Supper is a very wide range of events. I'll explain it in a little bit, but just in general categories at the Last Supper, um, meaning that all the events that happened after Last Supper wound up with him on the cross, and the things that he taught his disciples before going to the cross is what I want to deal with. And he, he's going to do it before the cross and after the cross. He's going to deal on the foundational doctrines of the Holy Spirit. Before he goes to the cross, he's going to teach him at what we call the Last Supper events. And after his death, burial, and resurrection, the 40 days of post-resurrection appearances, he's going to teach on this subject again in more detail. So I think it's very important that we that we understand these teachings of Jesus both before the cross and after the cross in regard to the coming ministry of the Holy Spirit. I think these, you're going to find, I'm going to show you seven foundational doctrines that were important to Jesus to establish with his disciples so that when Pentecost came, they would be prepared to enter a, a new dispensation Jewish age to church age, the transitional periods, they are going to need the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the absence of Christ as their great teacher. The second member of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, is going to be their great teacher in this great transitional period, Old Covenant, New Covenant, Jewish age, church age, uh, Levitical priesthood, to the royal priesthood. I mean, there are a lot of transitional things that are going to go on, and it's, it's described in the book of Acts. The, it, the book of Acts, Luke tracked it in the book of Luke. Well, this is where we're taking over the next few, uh, few weeks in the foundation doctrines. of. It's very important that you understand them. Very important. These are the foundational doctrines of the Holy Spirit to the church. And uh, I hope that this study will be as, as interesting to you as it is to me. Uh, I'm going to take it, I, my lesson text today is Acts 1, 1 through 5, to show you that he taught it before the crucifixion and he taught it after the resurrection in the post-resurrection appearances, that 40-day period, out of Acts 1, 1 through 5. Um, but the greater passage that I'm after with the seven uh, foundational doctrines is going to come from John 13 through John 18, 12. Now, I want you to remember that. It's, it's on your paper. And if you, of course, you know our protocol. If you don't have, if you didn't pull our study notes down for this lesson, you can get them later. You need a Bible, a, pe a paper, a piece of paper, and a pencil. That's protocol for Bible study. Well, let's have a word of prayer, and then we're going to get into our morning study. Remember, the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. You can't learn it nor live it in carnality. Evidence of carnality is personal sin. That's 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. Confession of that sin gets you back into the ministry of the indwelling Holy Spirit. 1 John 1, 9, if I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me. The word cleansing takes us to the cross of Christ, not for salvation in the Christian life. That's, that's, that's been done, but rather for spirituality, which is a process. 
And so when I confess my sin, I'm out of the flesh, carnality, and back into the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's why these foundational doctrines are so important. What Jesus is teaching his disciples are essential to the Christian way of life. You know, we've moved from the priest nation of Israel to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I give you a moment. Mental attitude sin, sins of the tongue and avert sins should be confessed in silence and privacy prior to study so that the indwelling Holy Spirit can teach you and recall the teaching to your life so that not only do you have a learning experience, but a living experience with the word of God. Because the Bible in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse 12, reminds us that the Bible is alive when it gets into our soul, when it gets down into the crevices of our soul, where it becomes a critic of the thoughts and intentions of our heart. It becomes the dynamics of the Christian life. Well, let's have that word of prayer. Confession of sin, if necessary, and then in that the Lord would teach us these great doctrines. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you today for these that have come our way uh, by the Internet ministry. We're so thankful for it, Father, during the crisis. We've been thankful for it before the virus crisis. But we're certainly thankful for it now because we've been able to keep our people fed and current uh, in Bible study as we are today. I pray the Holy Spirit would minister as, as required. The Lord taught about how he would indwell and he would teach and recall and he would guide and disclose. He would be that witness within us of the dynamics of Christ in the life. A living Savior. Well, Encourage your hearts today with the introduction to the foundation doctrines of the Holy Spirit taught by Jesus, both prior to his crucifixion and after it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today we introduce this new series, and remember, the, I'm taking it from John chapter 13, verse 1, through the 18th chapter, verse 12. Now, our lesson text today is Acts 1, 1 through 5, to show you, John is going to show you what Jesus taught about the Holy Spirit in John 14, 15, and 16. Luke is going to pick the subject up on the resurrection of Christ, the 40-day post-resurrection appearances, and what he taught, and before he went back, when he went back to heaven, called the Ascension and session at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. Uh, he talks about the first account that he composed would be the book of Luke, and book of Acts is volume two. Book of Luke would be volume one. Acts would be volume two. Until the day when he was taken up, ascension, after he had, by the Holy Spirit, given orders to the apostle whom he had chose, chosen. To these, the apostles whom he had chosen, to these he also presented himself alive after his suffering, death on the cross, burial, resurrection, by many convicting, convincing proofs appearing to them over a period of 40 days, that we call it the 40 days of post-resurrection appearances, to them over a period of, and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Now he's going to explain. And gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem. Now watch this. That's during this 40-day period. This, this is what he kept teaching them. But to wait for what the Father had promised, which promise, he said, you heard of from me, Jesus had taught it previously, for John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. He's in the 40-day ministry, and many days later, which is going to be 10 days after his ascension, which is going to be Pentecost, 50 days from his resurrection to the church. And so he's going to talk about the baptism. Jesus is baptizing with the Holy Matthew, Matthew, third chapter, verse 11, 12. 
See, what I want you to see is that he taught the things he taught on the Holy Spirit, which I call the foundational doctrines, before his crucifixion. During that 40-day period, he taught them, he taught them more. He taught them because Pentecost is coming. And Pentecost is the advent of the Holy Spirit and the beginning of the church. <coughs> my, my, you should know that by now. So what Luke does, he makes reference to the gospel, and Acts opens where, where Luke, the book of Luke closed, the book of Acts opens, closed with his death and his burial and his resurrection. Now the 40 days and then the ascension. What did he teach? He taught on the kingdom of God and the importance of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, which would begin at Pentecost. So Acts 2 picks up where Acts 1 closed and introduced us to the advent of the third member of the Godhead at Pentecost, which in the Greek language is called ho with the definite article the parakletos. The Paracletus, Ho Paracletus, the Paracletus, translated the helper or the comforter. It is a title given to the Holy Spirit in his Advent ministry to the church and to the world. Our lesson today is going to deal with three aspects of the foundation doctrines of the Holy Spirit. Number one, I need to begin with you by bringing in understanding to the three different locations of Jesus' Last Supper discourse. People really don't pay attention when they read the Gospels to the harmony of the Gospels. Where does the Gospels fit together in the life of Christ? Matthew, Mark, Luke. When you put those three together, we call them the synoptics, the similarities. And then we pull John aside because of the, the other things that John taught that the synoptics didn't. That's why I've chose John 13, 18 through 12. But in the synoptics of the Gospels, you can find the Last Supper in Matthew 26. You can find it in Mark 14. And you can find it in Luke 22. You can find Paul's reference to Luke 22 in 1 Corinthians 11. I've chose because anybody, you can, all the synoptics are going to hold pretty close together. John's going to step away and teach other things. And what he stepped away and taught was the foundational doctrines of the Holy Spirit that was important to the church. It, you should know that stuff um, without having to go to seminary. You should be able to get that from your church, as this church does. Now, so let's go back to point one, where I mentioned there are, were three different locations in what people call the Last Supper. There's the upper room. Where they, did, where, they did, uh, where they met, they had the foot washing, and they had the, the Paschal meal. Jesus taught at that session. That's covered in John 13 and 14. John 13 and 14 chapters. I mentioned where they're found in the harmony of the gospel. Here's a key passage for you. At the end of the upper room discourse, the Passover discourse, <laughs> Matthew 26, 30 says, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So they left the upper room. They've traveled through the Mount of Olives, and they're headed to Gethsemane. There was a discourse in John 13, 14, in the upper room, there's going to be a discourse at the Mount of Olives. John's going to record it, John 15 and 16. Then John 17 is going to deal with the prayer that the synoptics mentioned. He's going to deal with that prayer in doctrinal terms. You really need to know this. I mean, if you study your Bible, you will know it. So 
there is a transition from the upper room traveling to the Mount of Olives and the things that he stopped and taught his disciples. That is John 15 and 16, not recorded at all uh, by information except in the book of John. As they went to Gethsemane, on the way to Gethsemane, when they, they leave Mount of Olives, they go to Gethsemane, that Matthew picks it up in Matthew 26, 36, 37. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said, sit here while I go over there and pray. Now, we get a little bit of that in the synoptics. He prays the first time, second time, third time, and his disciples he picked to go with him, fall asleep and all that. But John, 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 John records this when John gets to it in the Gethsemane, when he gets to Gethsemane, you see. But what you don't see in the synoptics, you don't see John 15 and 16, what he taught at the Mount of Olives, which was a lot on the Holy Spirit as well as other subjects. Then he gets to Gethsemane. We have a prayer. We have a discourse. We have a betrayal and we have an arrest. John 17, 1 through the 18th chapter, verse 12. Matthew, in the 26th chapter, 36 through 56, covers uh, a lot of that as far as details. Not, not so much discourse, but details. In Matthew 26, 47, for example, while he was still st speaking in, at, in, in uh, Gethsemane, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, came up accompanied by a large crowd with uh, swords and clubs who came from the chief priest and the elders of the people. And of course, then they move him through trials to the cross. Now, I want to show you something that's really important that John picks up that nobody else does in the teachings of Jesus regarding the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus is teaching this at the Last Supper. I'm, I'm in John 16. Actually, it takes place technically at the Mount of Olives. But in John 16, 7, Jesus says something really interesting to his disciples. Now, remember John 15, 16, we're actually at the Mount of Olives. We're on the way to Gethsemane. Matthew tells us that. He begins and he says to his disciples, I tell you the truth. Now, anytime Jesus says that, you got a big doctrinal point coming. His disciples missed it, don't you? I tell you the truth. I mean, what would you expect? Nothing less than the Son of God, the hypostatic man, 100% God and 100% man. Why do you think he would have to tell somebody, I tell you the truth? He's not going to lie. He's veracity. He cannot lie and go to the cross. That, that is his mission, and he knows it. Nobody knows it better than himself uh, on the way to the cross. So why would he say, why would he say such a thing? I tell you the truth. I mean, has he ever been caught in a lie? No. If he has, he disqualifies himself to go to the cross. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God, made the righteousness of God in him. So why does he say that? I mean, does that not disturb your soul? Does that not? So like, why do he say that? See, that's, that kind of stuff gets to me. Oh, why, why would he say that? Well, if you study that phrase, verily, verily, I say unto you, or truly, truly, I say to you, or what I speak, I speak the truth to you. It's for emphasis. Of course, he's not ever lied. Of course, he's never lied. That's not the issue. The issue is this is an enormous truth from God. This is an enormous truth that you must get. This is from God, and it needs to be on your front pay, pay, uh, page. It needs to be on your plate. I tell you the truth. Now, watch what he's going to say. See, he's, he's, he's warned you ahead of time, this truth I'm about to give you is dynamite, and you'd better get it. This is on the front burner, right? 
Listen to what he said. It is to your advantage that I go away. Now, they've been upset for months for him talking about this. I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to be tried. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to be buried. I'm going to raise from the dead. And they don't want to hear about it anymore. Matthew 16, 21 through 23, when Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You need to read that. So he says to him, it is to your advantage that I go away. What possible advantage do you and I have that Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father and not on earth? It's to my advantage that he sits there and I stand here. <laughs> it's to my advantage that he's there and I'm here. What advantage in the world would that be? He tells you. For if I do not go away, the helper, comforter, Holy Spirit, shall not come to you. So what's my advantage? What's my advantage for Jesus to be in heaven, seated at the right hand of God the Father with all authority in heaven, and me be on earth? What possible advantage would that be? What possible advantage? Listen, for me to die is to be answered with the bodies, to be present with the Lord. What possible advantage would I have on earth to be absent from the Lord? Be sure you get his answer, the indwelling Holy Spirit. If I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, the whole paracletes, the Holy Spirit shall not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, then he talks about what he will do. Eh? Now, what he's going to do is he's going to teach his disciples out of, out of John's book the foundational doctrines of the importance of that. I'm going, to, I'm going to leave the earth, and you're going to be better off for it because I'm going to be in charge on this seat of authority over the heavens and the earth and everything else, and the Holy Spirit's going to be in charge of your life on earth. So don't you think you ought to know about the Holy Spirit and you ought to know the truth about the Holy Spirit? There's so much lies about the Holy Spirit. Don't you think? Listen, he said, I want you to, I want you to hear the truth about it. And over this series, you're going to hear the truth about it, whether you, <laughs> whether you like it or not. You need to hear the truth. His disciples, they didn't want to hear the truth. They had been pushing back on the truth. He said, you've got to settle down and accept the truth because it is the truth that sets you free. John 8, 32. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. I speak the truth and the truth will set you free. Free from what? Cosmic lies. Come on, people. Point number two. It was during the events of the Last Supper, Upper Room, Mount Olives, Gethsemane, that Jesus taught his disciples the foundational doctrines of the Holy Spirit's ministry during the church age. Most of these foundational doctrines of the Holy Spirit are recorded by John 14, 15, and 16. Jesus taught these foundational doctrines of the Holy Spirit that they would come with the advent of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost following his ascension and session. John 16, 7, I just read. I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage. Your advantage. Listen, let me tell you another one. 1 John 4, 4. John writes further. 1 John 4, 4. John's still writing. 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he who is in you, ministry of the Holy Spirit, than the devil who's in the world. Is that an advantage? <laughs> Oh, your whole life. Listen, your whole Christian life is about the advantage. To have the advantage. You have the advantage. 
Now, here's point number three. Oh, l let me mention this one. This is not on your paper, and it ought to be. I, have, I happen to think about this coming in to, to Bible study. John 14, 16. Listen to this. John 14, 16. Now, listen to this. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. Another helper. Helper, John 14, 16. The word another in the Greek language is alas. It means another of the same kind. Well, who is the another? It's Jesus, the second member of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And it's to your advantage to have the another helper. Because Jesus is gone. But God in his marvelous grace has established a magnificent, perfect plan to put the third member into the ministry of the church age. Isn't that wonderful? Is God not marvelous? Look how God takes care of us. He takes care of us. And, it, and then we, we fuss with him over the little trivial things of life. Why isn't God faithful? God is always faithful. You need to hear the truth about God. Why would you think otherwise? Point number three. The same foundation doctrines of the Holy Spirit taught by Jesus during the events of the Last Supper was also the major teaching of Jesus during the 40 days of post-resurrection appearances to his disciples. Now get that. Before the cross, he pounded them just before going to the cross. Last Supper events, Upper Room, Mount of Olives, Gethsemane. Goes and dies, buried, raised from the dead. Post-resurrection, back pounding it. Why? Because Pentecost is coming and a whole new dispensation. Ten great major changes, transitional changes. I got an old covenant, new covenant, Old Testament, completed Bible. Holy Spirit ministers outside, ministers inside. Levitical priesthood, no, uh, holy priesthood. These changes, you have to have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in charge of, of, of the transition, of all this transitional movement in the plan of God from one to another. And it's the book of Acts. People don't understand that. They misread the book of Acts, and we got some of the craziest doctrines you could ever, you could ever, you could ever hear in your whole life. People haven't paid any attention to the Bible anymore. They jump and skip and hop all over the place, and they come up with foolishness. My goodness. Let, well, let me read Acts 1, 3 through 5 again. To these he also re uh, presented himself alive after his suffering, his followers, his disciples, by many convincing proof, proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days, speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God, gathering together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father promised, which you heard from me, for John baptizes with water, but you will be baptized by me, by the Holy Spirit. And, and not many days from now, not many days after the 40 days, remember that when he is raised from the dead, that's first fruits of the Jewish festivals. You counted 50 days to Pentecost. When Jesus is doing this, we're in the 40 days of post-resurrection appearances. Not many days from now, we'll be 10. I'm, a, I'm bad with math, and I can figure that. Let me give you point number four. Point number four. We will outline, in point number four, we will outline seven passages dealing with the foundation doctrines of the Holy Spirit taught by Jesus during the events of the Last Supper as recorded by John 14, 15, and 16, and then Acts 1, 1 through 5. A special title is assigned to the advent of the Holy Spirit 
by Jesus in John 14, 16, when he called him the, paracle the whole paracletus, the helper, the comforter. Now, I'm going to list these for you. I'm going to show you the key verses. I'm going to give you a, a general idea. And then when I come back next week, we'll begin to take each one of these foundational doctrines and cover them. You think it's important? Do you think Jesus thinks it's important that when you come into the Christian life, you should know them? <laughs> he taught them to his disciples. This is, this, these are the foundation doctrines of the church regarding the Holy Spirit. The first passage is John 14, 7 through 21. The key verses are 16 through 18. What we're going to look at in the doctrinal idea is the permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of truth. Now, I can't begin to tell you those two connections. The permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of truth. He's given a special title. Paracletus, I'm coming in the place of Christ. The other comforter, I'm the other comforter. I'm coming, and, and my ministry is the church age. Jesus seated at the right hand of God the Father. The other title that's given to him in the church age is Spirit of Truth. Capital S, not, not a small S, a capital S of truth. He is the another comforter. Jesus, he told his disciples all the time the same thing. He told it to them all the time. All right, key verses 16 through 18. Now, when you read those verses 16 through 18, you want to look for like, you want to look for five or six things in there. The second passage important to this is John 14, 22 through 31. You want to pay attention to verses 25 and 26, where we're told that the indwelling, the permanent indwelling Holy Spirit will teach and recall the word of God, will teach it to us and recall it from us. The third is John 15, 18 through 27. That's the third foundational doctrine. You're going to find it in verses 25, 26, 27. The permanent indwelling Holy Spirit will testify about Jesus from the Christian way of life. Both by conversation and by conduct. How about that? Fourth. John 16, now we've moved to John 16, 5 through 11. The key verses is 7 through 11, where we have the permanent indwelling Holy Spirit convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment from the Christian life. Where does the Holy Spirit live during the church age? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, he lives inside the human body of a believer. Don't you know? that your bodies become the naos, the temple of God, the place where the divine dwells because of the atoning work of Christ. I don't know. The fifth foundational doctrine comes from the 16th chapter, 12 through 17, verse 13a. You're going to hear about the permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit will guide, will guide the believer will guide the Christian way of life, will, will listen, into all truth. Yeah, I love that. That's a promise from, from the heart of God. I will direct, the Holy Spirit in the church age will direct your heart into all the truth that's necessary for life in the church age. And whose responsibility is that? It's the Holy Spirit's responsibility to teach it. It's my responsibility to be open to the teaching of the Holy Spirit. The sixth foundational doctrine is recorded in John 16, 13b through the 16th verse. Permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit will disclose, will disclose. Not only will he guide you in 13, but will disclose all truth. Disclose it. <coughs> Not only will he guide you in it, but he will disclose it. 
And finally, we're in Acts 1, 1 through 5, verses 3 through 5, key verse. Takes us to Pentecost in Acts 2, 16, 17, and 33, where Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit. That is Jesus' baptism of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Now, I want you to do one thing before I close my lesson today. I want you to go up to the number one. That would be John 14. Now, I hope you will read 7 through 21, because when we come back next week, I'll be dealing for that. But I want you to look today, drop your eyes down, chapter 14, look at verse 6, 16, 17, and 18. And I want you to pay attention. I wrote down six things, six points. Jesus said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. Got that? That he will be with you forever. You got that? You get that? That is the spirit of truth. You got that? Whom the world cannot receive because it does not behold him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. Do you see those points? World doesn't understand this. The unbeliever can't do this. He has to be indwelled by the Holy Spirit to get it. The Holy Spirit, the indwelling Holy Spirit is the one who teaches, guides, discloses, recalls. The world can't do it. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. These are all enormous points. 18. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. I will not leave you as orphans. I'm going away. You can't come now. This is not a bad thing. It's to your advantage that I do this. I won't, listen, I think that's a really strong idea. I won't leave you as an orphan. Why? I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the third member of the Godhead. And what's he going to do? He's going to be the comforter and the helper of your soul. You should never feel alone. How is it possible that you could ever feel alone when the third member of the Godhead lives in your life as a comforter, helper? You should be way ahead of the game on that doctrine that's coming up next week. I want you to learn to read the Bible and let the Bible read to you. Let it, let it speak to your heart. Look for these things. What are the different things that I'm told that the... That what did Jesus tell me that when the Holy Spirit comes, what did he teach me? You need, to, you need to pay attention. Let the word of God talk to you. Let it talk to you. Let Jesus teach you out of the scriptures. That's what I want to encourage you. Next week we'll come back, we'll talk more about this. But I want you to read. I want you to see it. I want you to go back and look at the passage and see the setting of what was going on. What were, the, what were the disciples struggling with that the Holy Spirit could fix? Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for these that have come our way today to study with us on the introduction of the foundation doctrines of the Holy Spirit's ministry to the church. I pray, Father, the Holy Spirit would take the lesson of introduction and prepare our hearts for specific information on the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the church age. These are the foundational doctrines. All from these are the great development of the other doctrines of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. These are the key foundational doctrines. They're the key because Jesus taught them, and he taught them in such a way that they were in foundational. Encourage our heart, Father, through this study on the foundation doctrines of the Holy Spirit may change our life forever. In Jesus' name, amen.